Hey everyone, welcome to another live stream. I've decided to go live again tonight just because I wanted to um, share some of these Wendy Vecchi inks. And um, I wanted to share a video pretty quickly with you guys so you can really see how they work and things like that. And I can get the video out quicker for you because they just came out, um, I think over the weekend and they're really awesome inks. So I wanted to share some of the fun ways that I am using them. So I'm gonna be creating these two cards in today's live stream. Hopefully pretty quickly, I'm gonna to try to keep the time down so that you guys can watch it after and that the replay viewers don't really have to um, sit through a ton of talking. So um, here are the two cards we're creating and I'm gonna chat a little bit about these fun inks as well. So there's 12 colors of the inks. I have six of the colors here in these um, fun kind of bright rainbow colors. And all the supplies will be linked down below in the description box. So if you're interested in purchasing any of them, you can use my links down there if you'd like. And it helps give me a little bit of support and commission. And if you want some of these fun products, you can purchase them down there. So let's get right on in here. I would love to um, chat with you guys too. That's why I wanted to do um, a live stream for these, just so we can chat about some of the features and get all your questions answered. So I'll move these off to the side here and we can get right started. So I'll just kind of shove everything off to the side. And with my last live stream, I learned hopefully a little bit. So I got zoomed in a little bit more and also I kind of muted the light. So hopefully that works. Let me know if you guys are able to see and hear everything all right right now. Hopefully it's all working correctly. Okay, so let's get right on in here. So these are dye inks. So these are water-based inks and they'll react with water too. So in the past, Wendy's had the archival inks um, and they don't react with water, so they're permanent. And she has them in this beautiful color range. So you can see some of the colors here and there's even some more, um, there's 12 colors that have released. So she got that beautiful range of colors. So let's get right on in and start working with these already. Um, I'm gonna pull in a stencil here. This one's from Tonic and it's got these fun kind of beveled diamond shape here. And I'm gonna be using this for the ink blending. So I'm just gonna grab a sheet of cardstock and I'll grab some purple tape. You always gotta use the purple tape. And this stuff is super nice for stenciling or things like that, just so your cardstock won't rip once you're done. So how has your guys' nights been? I would love to hear all about it here if you're crafting along with me. I had so much fun in the live stream I did the other day. I really wanted to do one again today. And then I'll probably keep it to Saturdays after that. Cause I'm pretty busy this weekend. So I thought I would still get a video out for you guys here. I might have another one later on in the week. Okay, so I'm just taping the stencil down to make sure it doesn't kind of shift around as we're ink blending. And then you can either use mini ink blending tools like I have here, and these work just a little bit faster, so I'll probably use these in today's video. But I did use the Nouveau stencil brushes in my last example, and they kind of give a softer result. So you can kind of see some of those brush marks, and they give a really cool effect too, but I wanted to kind of speed up the process here. So I'll just use these sponges, and these are just Ranger mini ink blending tools. So they just apply the ink a little bit faster in my opinion. Uh, but if you want softer effects, you can always go with the stencil brushes. So I'm going into the ink here, and this ink is super blendable. So as I spread it onto the cardstock here, you can really see how nicely the ink goes down. And there's not really any harsh edges as I'm applying it, which I really like. And I also have to say, if not anything, I love the colors that Wendy has in her line. They are awesome. She's got a great color collection and I love working with them. So I'll go into the orange blossom next, and I'm gonna do some ink blending here. And I just go right up to that red and kind of blend in between those colors. And this is kind of like a softer orange kind of color. I really love the sort of bright, but kind of muted tones that these are. I'm not seeing anybody in the chat, but I see that people are in here, guys. So I hope it's working all right. Then I'll go in with some sunflower ink and this color is super bright, I love it. 
And I'm just using this same sponge as the orange color. Oh, awesome. Well, have a great night. Hopefully you can catch the replay. So now I'll go into the fern green color and I'll blend some of that onto here. And these inks blend really, really nicely. And you'll see kind of how they react with water too. I'll spray a little water and kind of react it later on in the video too. So these are lots of fun to play with. And if you want to, you can go right back in if you think you covered up that green too much and kind of blend that yellow out a little bit. Awesome. And then I'll go into the blue as well. So I'm using this bright bluebird color and I'll blend this right here at the bottom. So it's really easy to get the ink on your sponge because these are new sponges. So it's really easy to load up that ink and get it right onto the surface. So I'll ink blend that bottom color there. And then if you want to, you can easily take a spray bottle here. So I'm just, this is just a Nubo spray bottle filled with water. Awesome, you came across my videos on the weekend. Awesome, thanks so much. I'm glad you're in the stream right now. I'm happy to chat with you guys. This is lots of fun. So here's what it looks like. You can see how it kind of reacted to that ink. It's still wet here, so you can kind of see it. But look how nice those blends of colors are. And you can really see how that water kind of reacts and kind of makes cool designs in the ink too. So because it's a water-based ink, it'll react with that water really, really nicely. You can even spray more color on top to get it kind of bleeding across. And I think that looks really cool once it's done. You can really see those effects. And we'll let this dry off to the side here. But this is one of my favorites here. And I love how the inks blend and the colors are just phenomenal. That's probably one of my favorite parts about these inks. So later on in the video, I ran out of watercolor cardstock, but I'll share how it looks on Bristol. And it looks just absolutely amazing. You can really get the colors to move on there. So now I'll take another sheet of cardstock here and I'll take the excess that was on my stencil and I'll just kind of press it down onto the surface. It's almost like using a stamp here, but you get those kind of leftover ink that you had on the surface there, which is really fun. So it got stuck to my surface here, but you can see how it gets kind of way softer on the color there. But you can still see that really fun design. And I like how it transferred kind of jagged down here, but you got that ink on there and it looks almost like a watercolor, but with no um, real effort there. And you're really just using up the excess ink that's on your stencil. So I love how that looks. Okay, so I'm gonna wipe off my stencil now here. And then I'll create another card and we'll kind of finish this one off. And I wanna keep it nice and short and sweet. I would love to chat with you guys though. I'm having lots of fun here. I love doing these streams because I'm able to kind of talk to you guys a little bit more um, and answer any questions you guys have during the stream. So if anything comes up or you just want to chat, be sure to leave um, in the live chat some comments. Okay. So now I'm going to continue on. I'm going to be using this awesome stamp set from Hero Arts. I love this set so much. I've been waiting to use it on a card and this seems like the perfect opportunity so it's the Hero Arts Support, Prayers, and Love set. And it's got all these really awesome stamps um, about, you know, I'm here for you, prayers, support. And then it's got rain or shine, I'm with you. And I love the little fun graphics in here too. So I'll be using this on today's card with a little bit of watercolor with these inks. And I'll finish these off later that we just created. I just wanna give them a little bit of time to dry and I'll probably have to heat set them too. So I've already got the stamps mounted on my acrylic blocks. And I'm going to grab my Nuvo Hybrid ink. And I just chatted about this ink the other day, but this works really nicely with um, alcohol markers or watercolors. So it's super nice that it's versatile like that. And today we're going to be using it with the watercolor. So I'll be able to line up my image and stamp it down to the center here. You're in my heart. I love this set. Because you always need a sympathy card or a thinking of you. So I really love how that turned out. I'll give it a little second to kind of dry off here. And then we can move on to our watercolor. 
So I think I'm just gonna heat set this real quick. I'm gonna mute you guys for just one second and I'm gonna heat set this. Oh, I apologize. I um, left you still on mute. Thanks for letting me know. Okay, well, I used this little mini um, Ranger blending tool. These come in packs of five and it's double sided. So these are super nice to get in those small areas. So I just used that bluebird color and went around that globe there on those water areas. And I went a little bit outside the lines because we're gonna be moving that color. Basically, you just want to focus on adding lots of ink onto the surface here. Sorry, guys. Thanks for letting me know that I was still on mute there. Yeah, watercoloring with inks is one of my favorite. I have to say I love using inks on my cards for kind of techniques and things like that. So I'll go in with the fern green here. Now you guys can hear me, hopefully. And I'm just applying my color. Again, really focusing on just getting lots of color on the surface because we're going to try to watercolor and kind of move it in just a second here. So just applying a little bit of color. And these come in packs of five and they're double-sided. So you can use both ends and you have lots of wiggle room to use all your different colors on these. And I really just like how simple it is to get in all those tiny little areas like this. So there's our um, ink blending. And now I'm gonna go in with that water like I just did earlier, but I'm gonna kind of bring it closer to the surface and you'll see it kind of moves that color way more than it did on the other one. So that was just with one spray. And it really bleeds that color out and kind of moves it around a little bit. You can really see how that looks there. If you want to, you can even go another spray there. And it really just moves around that color. So the more you do it, the more color you've moved around. And you get that really, like I said, effortless watercolor effect, which I really love. So hopefully, once again, hopefully you guys are seeing everything okay. I hope it's better than the last stream. Um, but here I'm just going to mute you guys once again. I'll bring you off of mute after I'm done, I promise. Um, but I'm just gonna heat set this really quickly and the heat tool is pretty loud, especially with the mic. So just give me a second here. I apologize to have to keep doing that. I just um, think it's better to kind of mute that sound out because the heat tool is pretty loud once it's going. So here's how that looks once it's done. You can even go back in and apply more color if you want to, like this, just apply a little bit more color if you want it darker in some of those areas on the actual globe itself. So you can just go in and that way the watercolor that's kind of bursting out is a little bit lighter and the inside is still remaining that darker, nice color there. And this is just once it's all dry. You don't want to go in when it's still wet because it'll kind of peel the paper up a little bit. So there you go, there's the fun result with that watercolor. And I'm just going to go in with a Nouveau Aqua Shimmer pen, which just adds a little bit of shimmer and I think everything needs a little bit of sparkle. So I'll just add some onto here. And once this is all dry, it won't come off on your hands, but you get that nice sparkle. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's really evident in real life, it looks awesome. So this wasn't even watercolor cardstock. This was just regular cardstock, but on watercolor cardstock, it'll move even more. I just ran out of it and I forgot to use the Bristol here. But the other example that I did here is on Bristol and you can see the um, color in the regular cardstock stayed a little bit more, but you still get that bleed on the outside. Whereas the color on the Bristol really just kind of moved all over the place. 
and it didn't really keep that integrity of the color on the inside. So you can kind of um, figure out which one you like better there. <laughs> you thought we were testing you to see if you were paying attention. Yeah, I left you guys on mute for a little bit there, but hopefully um, you guys kind of get the gist there. So you can kind of test it on regular cardstock or Bristol and kind of see which one you like the best or regular watercolor cardstock because inks react really different on really different surfaces, you know? So then to finish off these cards, I'm just going to um, mute it again really quickly to quickly dry this. Um, and I'll be back in one second again. Have I tried the Fantastics? No, but I heard that those worked really nicely too. So I'll have to get those to try in the future, but I do love how affordable these are for just the pack of five and they got both ends. So those work really nicely to get in the details too. So here's that bright color, it's all dry now. And then I can go in and I'll take a um, stamping tool here. I'll grab my stamp platform to do my stamping. I'm excited for the little mini one to come out. And then I can apply my paper here. Thanks so much. And then I'm gonna take this Hope stamp set from Altenew. So this one's really awesome. I didn't get a chance to use this one and I've been looking for a day. So today is that day. I'm gonna use, even though this is a stamp layering set, I'm just gonna use the middle image of both. So that tends to have just enough detail, but not a completely solid image. So I really like that. And I'll bring out the middle images here. So we've got this big flower, which I love. And then I'll bring in a little leaf here too. And that just kind of makes a little scene on the card. I'll move my magnet there. And it just creates a fun little scene to create. And I like, because it's such a solid watercolor background, I like making sure that my images are pretty solid too, because otherwise they would get lost on there. Or you could also use a cardstock panel and stamp your images on top. But I find um, I just wanted to test out with a really solid image here. And it really helps to use this stamping tool um, for solid images, because I know for a fact I probably won't get this stamped right the first time. So I'll give it some good pressure there. And yeah, it didn't stamp perfectly the first time. There's some areas where it missed it. On the other one, to get a really nice um, solid image, I stamped it about three times over the surface. And if you're missing areas, you can really focus your pressure in that certain area to get that. Another fun thing is if you're really missing an area and you just can't get it stamped, you can always go in with one of these blending tools. And since they're that fine detail tool, you can fill in any area that you're missing. So if you really just can't get an area stamped, you can kind of fill it in with that Fantastics or, or the Ranger blending tool that you have. Yeah, I love those ink colors. These are the new Wendy Vecchi inks. They're lots of fun, mainly because of the colors, but they really react nicely to, those, um, to the water and things like that. If you want that watercolor effect or with ink blending, they work really nicely for that. So I just shared these two examples today, but with most inks like this one, the sky is really the limit. So you can really have fun. I always say that with inks because it's just an ink pad. So you can have lots of fun and really test out different things with it because you're not really limited to how much you have of it or things like that. You can really have fun playing around with it. So then I'm going to go in here and on the other card, what did I stamp? I stamped the sending you prayers so again, I really love this set. Here, I have the Send You First um, stamp, but I'll do Send You Support this time, just so I can have a different card to send out. I'm so glad to see you all in the stream tonight. I didn't know how many people were gonna show up, but I really enjoy doing this, especially just to get some content out to you guys. So if I know that I'm not gonna have lots of videos one week, or if I have some tests and things like that, I can always quickly hop in live and make a couple cards and that way it kind of gets rid of that editing time in between. 
so you don't have to really wait for all the content, but you still get to see the fun video. So hopefully you guys like these streams. I probably won't do them super often. I'm thinking maybe every Saturday for a Saturday stream with Simon, but let me know what you guys think. I would love to hear what you think about the streams. I really do enjoy doing them and chatting with you guys. Um, but I'll definitely still have my edited videos in there too. And I have one coming up soon, which I'm really excited for. So I'll take my little mini trimmer here. This is the little mini tonic trimmer from Tim and Tonic. And I'm just gonna cut off a little bit on each side. So I'll just cut off a little bit of that card. And then I can add it onto a card base here. You're supposed to be doing an assignment right now, me too. You usually don't care for lives, but you like this one. Well, I'm really glad you're enjoying this. And I probably won't try to draw it on too long, maybe five, 10 more minutes, and then we'll probably end it there. You like to watch live, awesome. Yeah, I love to chat with other creators live. So it's really fun to be able to do it myself now. And uh, having done it once, um, it's getting a little bit easier and hopefully some of the things that I did the first time kind of improved. Awesome, I'm glad you guys are enjoying this. And I really did wanna share these inks live too, just so you can ask any questions if you have any or things like that. Because I know sometimes in the past when I've done an ink video, not everything's super clear in the video. So if you've got any questions now, I would love to hear them. I've been having lots of fun playing with these tonight. So there we go, I'm going to add this onto the card base here. So a little bit warped, but I think just some tape runner will work really nicely. Oh, looks like this one needs a refill. Does this one have anything in it? Nope. Okay. Where did I put it? I have some tape out here too. I got the little Sukwon tape or be creative double-sided tape. So I'll just stick this onto the card on the back of it and that'll apply it really nicely. This is super strong double-sided adhesive. Yeah, I love doing the stamping on top of a really complex background like this, just because if you do it in a really solid ink like the black ink here, you can get really cool results with it, just really contrasting um, the background. So I'll add this onto my top folding card base here. Rena K problems, yes, I love her videos too. She's awesome. She's so much fun to watch. So here on the bottom, I take this little tiny trimmer and I'll just chop off the bottom portion of the card there because I just left a little bit of excess there. So here's how the card looks once it's complete. And if you want to, you can even go in. This is some tonic glimmer paper. I love this, it's got lots of glitter on it. So if you like glitter, this is really nice. And I find it doesn't come off on your fingers too much. So I'll set this off to the side and then I can add a little strip of glitter paper here onto the side. It's just a tiny little strip. Yeah. Yeah, they just released this weekend, so they're pretty new. But yeah, these are um, water-based inks, so they react with water and they'll play really nicely hand in hand with her archival inks. So I'll probably share a more formal video probably showing them, but I just really wanted to get a video out using them and really share um, and kind of chat with you guys tonight. But I'll probably create a more formal video showing how to use them with her already existing inks because they do work really nicely together. I was playing with them a lot this weekend and I found some really cool effects with them just by creating a couple different cards. So I'll be sure to share another video if you guys are interested. And I hope you guys like on lives making full cards. I still do like to create full cards just for the inspiration there. So you guys can kind of see how to use other products with backgrounds or things that we create. Because I find that if I just leave it with the background, you're not gonna really know what to do with it. So I do like stamping those solid images on here for a little bit of contrast. And I love this sentiment here from that Hero Art set. And if you guys are interested, anything I'm using is linked down below in my description box. 
So there's a, a main supplies list down there full of everything that I used in today's um, live stream. So you could also do a similar thing on this too. So if you wanna use this more muted background, you can. I'm gonna skip that today and just move on to finishing off the little world card here. So here's the result of this little one. And I'm just gonna heat set this a little bit more. It seems to still be a little damp, so just one second. There we go, I got you guys unmuted. And I'll chop off a little bit of this card too because I don't want the full panel on here. So I'll cut off just a little bit on each side. And I like doing this with my cards, um, just cutting it on the sides and not the top and bottom. And for me, that just creates um, an area to put color on the sides rather than matting the whole thing. So I really enjoy doing that because I love using the top folding cards. So I'll pull out another top folding card. I got these already pre-cut. Usually I do some scoring because I know it can kind of ruin the card stock if you don't. But just for the purpose of the live stream, I'll just score it like this. And it turned out pretty nice. Okay, so I've got this little piece of blue cardstock. That one doesn't fit on there. I'll grab another piece. Hopefully this one works out nice. Okay, there's a little bit of edge on there. We should be able to use that for the card. Yeah, it does save cardstock, definitely. Saves you on having to map the whole thing. So here we go. Now I can um, take this and apply it onto here. But if you want to, you can even go in and just ink the edges. So I'm just gonna use my finger for this here. If you want to, you can go in with a blending tool, but I just find this to be really easy. I don't want the full color of swiping my ink pad onto there. I kind of want it to be a little spotty and kind of splotchy. So I'm just applying with my finger here. And I'll just kind of rub it on the edges. But like I said, I'm leaving out some of those areas because I don't want it to be a full colored card. So here's a little tip too. You guys mentioned the other day on how clean my hands were. I've got this little rag off to the side and I use stamp cleaner and I just kind of wipe off my hand and kind of scrub it a little bit. And you can see lots of that ink came off already. There's still a little bit of stain, but I can definitely pull that off later with a little scrubby or things like that. So if you're worried about your hands getting messy, that's always a really good tip to just use stamp cleaner. And I got the um, ultra clean, so that works really nicely. Awesome, thanks so much for catching the live. I'm so glad you are new to my channel. I'm so glad to have you here. I hope you're enjoying the live stream. So I'll just add some of that Be Creative tape again here. And because this is warped, this tape actually works really nicely for this. So instead of using a tape runner, Usually I would use this Be Creative tape anyway, so I'm glad my tape runner ran out um, because this just really keeps it a nice strong bond to the cardstock. So I'll apply it all to the back there. And I'll peel these backing sheets off. There we go. And these come off pretty easily too. Love what you've seen so far. Awesome, I'm so glad. I'm so happy to be doing these live streams too. I know I've said it more than once, but lots of fun to be on here with you guys. So I'll add that onto the piece of blue cardstock here. Again, just matting the sides too. Now this adhesive is pretty strong though. So when you wanna move it on your cards, it's not too easy to do that. So you gotta be sure you know exactly where you're setting it down before you do. It's a little uneven there, but I can always chop off a little bit from one side. You guys get to see some of the mistakes I make too, which is kind of fun. All part of the creative process. And then I'm able to just quickly add it onto my card base here. So I'll do this one a little faster. I'm not gonna cover the whole back. Here we go. And then I'll peel the backings off of these sheets as well. 
And you could always mount this on foam tape too if you want, or you can mount that little heart globe in the center on foam tape. But I just thought it would be fun to come on live here and make some really easy cards with you guys. I love doing watercolor and things with inks and stuff like that and techniques. And I really just love the simplicity of just leaving a card and having a, a watercolor background or a watercolor piece really stand out by itself. And I kind of learned after a while to, after you're done creating and you like what you've got, I would just stop there and kind of leave it really simple because I find the more that you add, the more distracting it gets from your background or your card or whatever you really want to showcase. So here are the two cards I've created tonight. So here um, on this card, or actually, I created this one in the video, but um, on this card, I shared how to create that fun blended background there with those really bright, vibrant colors. And you can really tell the difference between the stencil brushes and the sponges. So you can get two different effects there with softer color or the um, more vibrant color. And also on, on the other one, I added a little bit of that aqua flow too. So it's really fun to add that shimmer onto the black because it just kind of makes it stand out and shine a little bit more. So obviously you could skip this step if you're not a huge fan of shimmer and glitter, but it won't come off on your hands either. Awesome, yeah, with trimmers, I find the tonic trimmers work really nicely. They have been a lifesaver. I've tried lots of trimmers that haven't worked for me, but once I got these guillotine trimmers, they cut really nice and straight every time. It's just a matter of getting everything lined up on your card straight. Awesome. Yeah, mistakes happen to everybody. You kind of just got to keep working or cover it up with a sequin or something. So hopefully you guys can see some of that shimmer in the stream here. You kind of see it on there on the black surface. You can really see it in real life as you tilt the card there. And I think it goes really nicely along with the glitter card stuck on the side. So awesome. I hope you guys had a great time with the live with me tonight. I know I had fun chatting with you all and taking a look at these new inks. So these are the new Wendy Vecchi Make Art inks if you're just coming in recently. Um, these are the water-based inks because she's already got the archival and I'll probably be sure to share a more formal video there with these inks again using um, her already archival inks with them because they play really nicely together. But here are just two really simple cards sharing some ink blending and a little bit of spray on it and then sharing a full out watercolor kind of spray card here where it kind of bursts out from the surface there. So if you guys have any last questions, I'll be sure to answer them here. Thanks guys so much for joining me tonight. I think I'll probably end it right about here, but I hope you guys will have a great rest of your night. Thank you so much for joining me in this stream. I'll just wait a couple of seconds here. Awesome, I'm so glad you guys enjoyed the stream. Thank you so much. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And if you are new here and want to see more of my content, please click that little subscribe button. And also, if you wanna get notifications, there's a little bell icon next to the subscribe button once you click it. Be sure to click the bell and you'll get notifications every time I post. I know YouTube's been a little funky with that lately, but then you'll get notifications every time I share a new video like this one. All right, guys, I hope you guys had a great time tonight. Um, and I'll see you very soon for another edited video, hopefully. Um, hopefully that'll be pretty soon for another card making and crafting video. I just got to end the live stream here and have a great night, guys.